my dear students of class 9 today i shall read the text all about a dog that you will find in your lesson number 2 all about a dog written by a g gardiner a g gardiner <coughs> the full form of a g gardiner is alfred george gardiner was a british journalist and author his essays written under the pen name alpha of the plow are highly regarded he wrote many essays under another name that was alpha of the plow now this text all about a dog is an essay though this essay has been taken from the essay of the same name or this is an edited version though its original version was in the same name all about a dog I was traveling in a bus. It was a bitterly cold night. The author A. G. Gardiner was once traveling in a bus when there was severing cold. At the time was night, and it was so cold that even at the far end of the bus. the east wind cut like a knife so it was biting cold that night and the cold wind blowing from the east direction was cutting on the body of the narrator or was cutting on the body of someone as was felt by the narrator like a knife the bus stopped and two women and a man got in together and filled the vacant places once the bus stopped and two women and a man <coughs> boarded the bus together and filled the empty places empty seats the younger women carried a little pekinese dog now one of them was younger one of the women who boarded the bus was younger one and she carried a little pekinese dog pekinese dog a special type of dog that is a small dog with flat face and long soft fur on its body the conductor came in and took their fares once the conductor came in inside the bus and took the fares or collected the fares from the women then his eye rested on the beady eyed dog one another important characteristic of the pekinese dog is that the dog has small eyes beady eyed dog means the dog with small eyes i saw trouble coming up now the author observed that the trouble was started uh, the start, uh, trouble started coming up this was the opportunity for which the conductor had been waiting and as was observed by the narrator that was the chance that was the opportunity for the conductor for which he had been waiting and he intended to make the most of it the narrator felt the narrator observed that the conductor intended or desired to use that opportunity to its best 
I had marked him as the type who had a general vague grievance about everything. I had marked him. The narrator noticed the conductor as a type of man who had discontent about everything for not any specific reason or not any known reason. He seemed to have a particular grievance against passengers who came and sat in his bus while he shivered at the door. He seemed to have a particular grievance against the passengers. Though his duty was to give the service to the passengers, provide the service to the passengers, but he was such a kind of man that he had grievance against those passengers because he was shivering in cold at the door, whereas the passengers were sitting comfortably inside the bus. You must take that dog out, he said. Now, the conductor ordered that younger woman to take her dog out. I shall certainly do nothing of the kind. You can take my name and address, said the woman. The woman refused to do so, refused to obey the conductor's order. She had evidently and she threw the challenge offering her readiness to provide her name and address to the conductor and indicated or uh, not indicated at all but threw an open challenge that the conductor must take an action against her if he desired so. She had evidently expected the challenge and knew the reply. Now offering her name and address and, uh, and throwing an open challenge to the conductor, she expected what would be the reply from the conductor's end. You must take, but for that the woman was ready. You must take that dog out, that's my order. The conductor repeated his order with a little strictness. I won't go on the top of the bus in such weather. It would kill me, said the woman. But the woman refused to do so. And she reasoned out that if he would go, if she would go to the top of the bus in such a weather, she would be killed. Certainly not, said her lady companion. Her companion took her side. She also reasoned out that you have got a cup as it is. Usually the younger women had a cough. So her lady companion, her companion or the elder women set that reason, put that reason before the conductor that she wouldn't do that kind of thing in such a way that it's nonsense, said her male companion. Her male companion also advocated the younger woman's stand. And he called it absolutely meaningless. The conductor pulled the bell and the bus stopped. Now the conductor had the power in his sight. He maintained the rule of the bus. So the conductor pulled the bell and asked the bus to stop. This bus doesn't go on until the dog is brought out. The conductor declares 
that this bus would not go until the dog was brought out by the younger woman. He stepped onto the pavement and waited. Going to the pavement, he started waiting for the lady's stand. It was his moment of triumph, triumph means victory. It was his moment of triumph. For what? For the, fa for the um, fact that he had been able to stop the bus as the lady did not obey his order. He had the law on his side. Everybody in the bus was on the side of the lady and her dog. They talked in raised voices. Everybody in the bus took the side of the lady. Nobody was in the side of the conductor at all. They talked in raised voices. Someone said it was shameful. Someone said call the police. Someone said let's all report him. I report him. Him refers to the policeman. Or the conductor may be referred to as him. Let's make him give us our fares back. Someone suggested that they should go to the conductor and demanded to give their fares back. Yes, that's it. Let's make him give us our fares back. And some others um, supported that suggestion of returning back their fares. The little animals sat blinking at the dim lights, unconscious of the trouble he had caused. The little animal for which the trouble was, the entire trouble was created. The little animal was innocent. So it sat blinking at the dim lights. It knew nothing. It was utterly unconscious of the trouble created by it. It didn't know at all that all the trouble inside the bus was created solely due to itself. It's because the animal was innocent, as usually is. The conductor came to the door. Some passengers demanded, give us our fares back. You have engaged to carry us. You can't leave us here at all night. The conductor came to the door. When he came to the door, some passengers demanded, demanded him to return back their fares, reasoning out that he had engaged to carry them, not to leave them there that night in the midway. No fares back, said the conductor. The conductor refused that he won't give their fares back. Two or three passengers got out and disappeared into the night. Two or three passengers got impatient and they left the bus and disappeared into the night. Or they vanished from the scene or from the spot. The conductor turned on the pavement, went to the driver to have a talk with him. Now, coming from the pavement, the conductor went to the driver and had a little talk with him. Another bus, the last on the road, went by. Now, the last bus on the road passed by. It seemed indifferent to the shouts of the passengers to stop. Some passengers shouted at that bus and asked or urged, put an urge to stop there. But that bus seemed to be indifferent or the bus conductor or the bus um, driver didn't pay any heed to their urge. A policeman strolled up. Now a policeman walked up, walked up into the place. 
looked in at the door, door of the bus, looked inside the bus from the door. The passengers passed out with indignant protests and appeals. Now, as soon as the passengers saw the policeman, they passed out with protests, angry protests and appeals. Well, he has got his rules, you know, he said genially. The policeman was quite a peculiar person. He didn't pay any heed or any attention to the appeals or the to the or to the protest of the passengers. Rather, he replied genially or pleasantly that the conductor had applied his rules, indicating that he had nothing at all, nothing um, to do at all. Then he went away to stand a few yards down the street. Now doing nothing, the policeman went away from there to stand a few yards down the street. There he was joined by two more constables. Now two more constables came to join the policeman. Still the do little dog blinked. Still the little dog blinked as the little dog didn't understand at all that the trouble was due to him. And the conductor walked to and fro like a captain in the hour of victory. <clears throat> and the conductor just pacing up and down, walking up and down like a victorious captain or triumphant captain, as if he had won a victory, he had won a battle. A woman passenger's voice rose above the gale, threatening the bus conductor. Now a woman passenger got outraged. Her voice crossed the sound of a gale, gale means storm, and she threatened the bus conductor openly, but he was cold as the night and hard as the pavement. But the conductor was a peculiar person. He was so stubborn. He was cold. He remained cold as the night. He remained hard as the pavement. That means he remained indifferent at all. She expressed her anger to the three policemen who stood up the street watching the drama. Now she also expressed her anger, her fury to the three policemen who stood up there, up the street watching the entire drama. What was happening there was rightly called drama. Then she came back, called her companion and vanished. Now she came back to her companion and bringing her, she also vanished from the place. The bus was empty, thus the bus was getting vacant. I will go to the top, said the young lady with the dog at last. Now finally the lady agreed to obey or was ready to obey the conductor's order, she decided that she would go to the top of the bus. You will have pneumonia, the man said. The man opposed her decision. He reasoned out that the lady, if she would go to the top of the bus in such a weather, she would get pneumonia. When she had disappeared up the stairs, the conductor came back and pulled the bell. Now, as was expected, when the lady with the dog went up the 
us or going to the top of the bus he came back and pulled the bell and asked the bus to move the bus went on he stood triumphant or victorious or as if he had won a battle great battle while his conduct was criticized in his face by the passengers all the passengers inside the bus were criticizing the conductor's behavior openly then the bus developed engine trouble and the conductor went to the help of the driver now once the bus developed and technic developed a technical problem engine trouble and the conductor went to uh, they went to help the driver somehow it was a long job or it took a long time to repair the bus or for the bus to be repaired meanwhile the lady with the dog stole down the stairs and re-entered the bus now in the meantime the lady stole down or secretly um, stepped down the stairs and re-entered the bus when the engine was put right or the bus was completely repaired the conductor came back and pulled the bell then his eye fell on the dog and his hand went to the bell rope again now as soon as his eye caught the notice of the dog his hand went to the bell rope again for the bus to stop or to stop the bus the driver looked round and the conductor pointed to the dog when the driver looked round for what he was asked to stop the bus the conductor pointed to the dog and the bus stopped the whole struggle began all over once again now once again the quarrel started the conductor walked on the pavement once again the conductor went to the pavement and the little dog blinked at the lights innocently the lady again declared that she would not go to the top and finally went the bus was soon empty and i was the last passenger left behind now the passengers were getting down one by one and the narrator was the last passengers in the bus, last passenger in the bus i have got my rules the conductor said to me now the conductor um, um, said to the narrator that he had got his rules he had won his victory but felt that he would like to justify himself to somebody now from his statement the narrator felt that the conductor had won victory but he seemed to be a little hesitated a little conflicted a little conflict was within himself whether he was justified or not so he would like to justify himself to someone and he got the narrator as the narrator was the last passenger in the bus so he got the narrator to justify himself before him rules i said are necessary things now the narrator opened up his mouth he said rules are necessary things obviously some are hard and fast rules like the rule of the road hard and fast rules means strict rules which cannot be broken by anyone like the rule of the road one example of hard and fast rule is rule of the road which cannot be broken without danger to life and limb that means if you break the rule of the road you will be in danger your life and your limb will be in danger great danger but some are only rules for you guidance but some rules are there which can be rightly called guidance 
like the rule about the dogs. You can use your common sense here. So some rules are there in which one can use one's common sense. They are meant to be observed in spirit, not in letter. They are meant to be observed in spirit, not in letter. Or you can't obey, you can't maintain some rules word by word or letter by letter or in a word you, uh, you can say strictly. You can't, some rules are there which cannot be maintained strictly. You can use some common sense or some com practical sense in respect of maintaining that rules for the comfort of the passengers. Now in applying the rules for the dog, the conductor can apply his common sense for what? For the comfort of the passengers for the comfort of several passengers. The author also said, you have kept the rule but broken its spirit. Obviously, the conductor had kept the rule, maintained the rule, but he had broken the spirit of the rule. Rule for what? The rule of the bus was for the comfort of the passengers rule of the bus was for the comfort of the passengers obviously but when the narrator uh, sorry but so far the conductor maintained that rule or kept up that rule he broke the meaning of the rule the objective of the rule the purpose of the rule as was explained by the narrator to the conductor. You should bind your rules with a little goodwill and good temper. The author also suggested the conductor to maintain a rule with a little goodwill and good temper. The conductor must keep in mind that the rule of the bus was for the comfort of the passengers. But when he maintained his rules strictly, he couldn't provide any comfort or a little comfort to the passengers of the bus. He failed to provide comfort to the passengers of the bus. So the meaning or the objective or the purpose of the rules of the bus was not at all maintained, was not at all fulfilled. Thus the narrator explained the bus conductor. He took it very well and when I got off the bus he said good night quite amiably. He took it very well or so far the narrator explained the meaning of the rules or so far, the narrator put the explanation or illustration about the rules before the conductor. The conductor approved, the conductor agreed with the narrator. And that was well indicated from him when he said, Good night 
to the narrator quite amiably or quite friendly or quite with a smile in his face so this is the text all about a dog i hope you have understood the text and when you will read this text after hearing or after watching this video it will be clearer to you and you will get get satisfaction or get great pleasure or a great lesson from this text you will get a very useful message from this text okay dear students goodbye